Hey everyone and welcome back to CJ Race Cars YouTube channel. Today we're going to talk to Danny on a Nova build. Uh, the last time we showed you guys this, it was about two weeks ago. So I'm going to show you. So basically, like I was saying, get the body squared up side to side. And then to move it front to back, the cross member on our jig does not move. So to figure out where the center of the wheel will open and goes, which is that line on the table right there, you'll basically, you figure out whatever four length bar length you want to use. And you'll add that length to this length, which will be the back of the cross member to the center of your four length bar hole. And then to the back, you'll add your four length bar length. And then you'll do the same thing on the back. From that bracket, from here to the center of your axle. All three of those measurements will add up and give you the measurement from the center of the wheel well opening to the back of the cross member. So that's probably the most important thing, moving the body front to back. Danny's got it side to side and front to back. So he's ready to start with the cross member. On these cars, we did Justin's car. His car had a tall roof. This car has a pretty tall roof, but we still do them all the same. On the cross member, we bend a 90 on the driver's side, just because if the seat has to sit down below the cross member, it can. On this side, we bend whatever angle it is. Um, we this, do like a 10 inch setback. This, this one's gonna be about that angle right there, which with me just guessing at it by looking at it, it's about a 40 degree angle. 40 degree angle, so. Yeah, 45 would bring it up about there, so it's about a 40. Yeah, the angle here. changes per car depending on how wide the car is. So if the car is wider, to get our same setback, basically what he's doing is this mark here, is is where the main hoop's gonna go which is 10 inches in front of the cross member right basically what we have is you the main hoop is going to weld to that continuous bar over there 10 inches in front of center of tube so over here you just find your center of your tube measure up 10 inches and since the hoop is going to weld to this bar and not this bar you got to make your angle so that your tube, if you can see it, you want it to be center of that tube, and you can run it long, cut it later. But you're going to run it the center of that tube and bring it up like that. That way, when your hoop is 10 inches up over there, it'll be 10 inches up over here and be on this tube. Your rocker panel will notch and go into it like so. Right, exactly. So basically, the 10 inches, the mark he's got there, is um, basically the setback of the funny car cage, because that'll be the main hoop. There's a lot of different ways to do this. You could do this rear cross member straight, do your main hoop here and the whole funny car cage in front of the main hoop, which I don't necessarily like, you can do it. This car is kind of split in the middle where the funny car cage is behind and in front of it, which I do like that. But I really like the front hoop uh, designed better than any of them, especially on like a pro mod style car. The 10 inches is the setback of the funny car cage. And uh, now he's got that all figured out and the width of everything, he's gonna go ahead and bend this cross member. And then we'll lay out the frame rails, rocker bars, floors. We'll have to figure out where the engine placement's gonna be for where he bends the frame rails. We'll explain all that stuff. So we try to bend the frame rails um, to where they're directly in front of the four-link bars, because or four-link brackets, because the bottom of the four-link brackets push, try to push that cross member in when you let off the tranny brake. So if you put the frame rail directly in front of that, it definitely helps with deflection on this cross member. So we'll show you that. This is where everything takes place. Yeah, most important thing probably. When it launches, all the force goes right there. Yep. So we'll let Danny get to that bar, and then uh, once he gets that bar fit, we'll show you how he's fitting the rest of this stuff. Yep, I'll have the bar bent in it tomorrow. We'll be all right. No, next just, week? Just kidding. By next week, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it'll be all right. <laughs> so I'm going to show you what he's got done in two weeks. He's worked on it pretty much every day since then. He does all the chassis stuff, and I'll just kind of go over some stuff with him, and we'll show you what we got going on. Danny. Yes, sir. <laughs> you want to explain how you've gotten to this point in the last two weeks? The last time we did a video, we showed uh, basically the cross member placement and how you figure out where the center of the rear end is. Because like we said before, the cross member doesn't move on a jig. So we figure out from the back of the cross member, depending on your four-link brackets, where your four-link goes. We run a 21-inch four-link bar. Some people run them shorter. Some people run them longer. But with the four length bar we use, we, we come up with all the measurements to figure out basically where the center of the rear end is. And the center of the rear end does change. The cross member placement on our jig does not change. So once you figure that out, that determines where the body goes. And then you kind of start from there, which we kind of went over in the last video. I think that's all we left off with. Last time you were bending the, the, oh, uh, okay, yeah, the number one bar, which is the, the cross member here. That's so. the first teeth that goes in all down the driver's side, cross the cross member, and out here just 
this gets cut off later. Right. Uh, then, uh, let's see. And kind of, kind of to show them, not to cut you off, but to show them, on our cars, on, on all the Pro Mod style cars, Pro 275, or uh, Radio Versus World's all the same, pretty much the Pro Mod chassis. So on ours, we do the main hoop is the front of the funny car cage. You don't have to do that. You could make this the back of the funny car cage. You could even put it in the middle of the funny car cage and put part on the front, part on the back. But this is the design I like the most. I feel like it's one of the safest designs. Uh, it doesn't mean it's the only way to do it, but that's the way we do it, so. Yeah, if you look at an SFI book, you've got A, B, C, and D. Three or four One's all the way in front, one is all completely behind. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, we build it, bend that bar first, and once it's in place where we want it and everything, then the next step is to run your two lower frame rails out, and they always go in line with your folding brackets, depending on how wide you're going to set them. Mm -hmm. Varies, different rear ends, different widths. And put, put a kick in those bars there, put them in, in the saddles and everything, get that ready. And then the next step we do is we put the cross member here right by the transmission. Then we locate this bar, it goes in, and then the four pieces for the lower X. Then we put the continuation of that bar over to the outside rocker bar. Two little bars under the seat go back. And then the next bar that goes in has to be this one. And that determines where this one and this one goes. But this matters a whole lot because there are certain rules you have to go by on how far apart this and this can be and sometimes you have to get yeah creative. 16 inches is, is the most you can go forward this point here to the front of that cross member can only be 16 inches max if it's more than that you have to put gussets on the inside and stuff like that which we don't want to do because it already gets tied in there with transmission clearance and everything else so yeah, usually it works out yeah and so we have that determined to get that in and then this bar, we already know where our mid plate's going to be. So once this is in, then this bar is easy. It just goes right in line with the mid plate on the edge, and then it goes in here and notches half and half on this. That's simple. And then once you have this bar, and like I said, then you know where this is gonna go, and it goes on this bar, and you make accordingly, go in place. Same thing over there. And then we bent this bar, which goes on top of the upper cross member. That one's, pick, that one's kind of tricky, but I made a jig up for it to where you can get your centers just right, and then you just know your bend points and mm -hmm. copy it, and hopefully it all just falls in place. Got lucky on this one. Did good. <laughs> yeah, it looks really good. This chassis also, to, to specify, is a 25.2. Uh, a 25.1 would be a pretty similar chassis, except for it doesn't have an X in the roof. This bar would be one inch instead of inch and a quarter. So this is this chassis is sorted to the same, but it's, it's for a he little heavier car, because the blower car, like a nitrous car would only be 2200, 2400, depending on what class you're running in 2450. This car is gonna be up, up to 2800, depending on what class, or 2850. So you want the, the 25 two with this deal. So, look a little heavier tubing. Yes, and then once that bar is in place, then you can start figuring out your funny car cage bars. You can put, uh, you bend this bar here, and then you, you, there's two ways you can do that back there. You can run those two upper bars, one piece, all the way down, but then you got to piece in these three pieces, and those can be difficult to put in a notcher because they're so close to the radiuses. So what we do is we make, we bend this hoop up as a continuous piece, which is actually easier. Then you just simply connect these two bars right here and here, and these two right here and here. You get your spacing according to your seat location, and Put those in and then a little three-quarter tubing is just like a helmet guard and so your head your helmet can't go outside the roll cage but that's yeah. not good we bolt all the isp padding to those also yeah. to to keep your head to where it can only move so far side to side then comes the fun part you have to determine where your upper shock mount bar is going to go once you have the rear end in center set to the length you're going to use it for that particular car you have a shock bracket on the back. This particular rear end is not adjustable. So that means you have to, you don't, you gotta be right on it. Yeah, you gotta be pretty spot on with the shock mount you height or else yeah. you're gonna be in trouble. You just can't pull a few bolts up and move it up or down. Right. So you determine that and then you like level straight up a prescribed amount depending on how long your shock is. There is again. And once you determine that length, then we have a jig where we set this tube in that jig. Yeah. This tube goes in first in the back. We have a jig that goes up here. We usually run that tube pretty much always high as you can to the uh, rear window. 
uh, the only reason we wouldn't run it maybe all the way to the rear window is like a G body or something that has a uh, sharp window that comes down and then this would interfere with the like the centerpiece in between the trunk and the window but in this case we could run it right up against where the window goes get it up high get the tubs up high and everything else so yeah. this car will probably never have anything but a 275 but if it ever did go to a big tire it have no problem clearing so yeah well like i said once that goes in we determine the height of the shock that goes in and then once that's there then you can start running this tube right here up to this bar mm -hmm. and then run this tube down to this bar and then this one can go in from the bottom and this is, has to be nice and level and that's where your roll bar mounts to it and uh, then you run these two bars to the back where your parachute shroud line anchor point is going to be and then you bend these two right here to come down and tie into them and then it's just a simple matter of laddering x bracing determining where you want to put them no real set rules on where they have to be it's just kind of what's well, the most convenient for what you're going to be putting in later right yeah i mean a lot of this is is not none of this back here is specified by uh the sfi book so the reason we've done it and we've changed them every car kind of to to make stuff better but you do it to make it the strongest and obviously you don't want it to be super heavy with a bunch of really heavy tubes but back here is pretty important this area needs to be really strong anti-roll bar shocks everything else but really the anti-roll bar that point needs to be super strong back here needs to be strong because it's got a parachute but not nearly as yeah as this, as this structure is parachute that's mostly it. and it holds the body from here forward has so much stress on it you can't imagine it yeah that's why you see so many tubes mm -hmm. there's a lot of force right there yeah yeah i mean everyone gets pretty serious on how heavy duty their anti-roll bars are but if you put a heavy duty anti-roll bar in and your chassis twist the anti-roll bar is really not doing its job so or it can't do its job right if the, if the chassis, chassis is twisting and the anti-roll bar is not it's still chassis it's still a problem zero flex right zero flex right the anti-roll bar is what does the flex yeah so i mean you could see there's a lot of a lot of gussets you know kind of leading up to that where the anti-roll bar is mounted a lot of x's there'll be another x up here to the top which you can't see right now these little tubes here are just to hold the quarter panel nothing structural but we have infinity brackets from uh bnb that we used on this car they, they allow you to adjust with an eighth inch increments we already explained the four link bar stuff the, the string is danny's string he measures everything off that that's dead center of the table so that's kind of his go back to you need to have a point where you can measure everything too because once you put something in and it's not straight it's a nightmare to, the rest of the car will be a nightmare so you measure everything off that string and every time you measure off of it you make sure that it's right where it needs to be because sometimes you might have something laying on the string a little bit that you don't realize and it'll push it off to one side mm -hmm. if you measure off of that well there goes your center yeah exactly so just that string is all important stays there during the entire build yeah we use that string we also have a laser that we put it's over there use a laser for some of the stuff uh you can use it for the i, I use it for the the eye bars to laser those in to get them level but there's a lot of different ways to do it danny's got his way of doing it and that's, he, well, he that's really new, school, man. new school i don't know anything about lasers i'll let, <laughs> I'll let yeah, I'm lasers. <laughs> yeah so this is about two weeks worth of work danny's done really good i think the only thing anyone's done but danny is uh eddie's come in and done some welding a little bit as danny goes and eddie did the anti-roll bar uh, and I rolled bar links or titanium and Eddie did the four-link bars. I think that's about it other than a little bit of welding Danny's done Everything else also. I want to show you guys on the Dual frame round Justin's car. We didn't have to do this because Justin's car is probably uh, I don't know probably eight inches wider than this car. Justin's car is really wide there. But you can see how the uh, dual frame rail on the driver's side is kicked in just a little bit And that's just to allow the seat to have room uh, the seat has to fit between the main hoop the door bar and the dual frame rail so which the seat's 20 inches wide 20 inches wide 20 and a half something like that yeah, it's about 20 roughly so and then this is just kind of the design we use on the dual frame rail it's what we like to do uh then again like we said it's it's personal preference you could do something different it's just what we think works the best we try to keep everything in line you can see we also do this tube down here and this x brace here this center tube and the x brace we use a little bit heavier wall tubing because a lot of these cars have an issue cracking in, in this area so this needs to be pretty stout and we also attach this tube which is pretty much in line with with this here and that's the four links pulling on that so you want to have that be strong here where the four links pulling and the four links pushing down here so it all has its purpose kind of looks crazy but all the tubes have their own purpose and reason why they're where they are lots of tubing lots of tubing so 
and a roll bars in. Oh, she's lots of pieces. Eddie's putting a wishbone together. Danny's doing all the chassis stuff. Uh, Eddie's gonna do probably all the titanium stuff he's already got. Uh, what's he got back there? He's got the front control arms already welded up. Yeah, he's got, he's got control arms, getting ready to do wishbone, drive shaft enclosure. We got the drive shaft enclosure stuff already bent and rolled. It's just gotta be put it's together. It's not finished yet. What else is back there? We got the anti roll bar links stuff done. I don't know about probably. Got tie rod stuff to do the tie rods and titanium. <clears throat> Also, Danny got the mid plate notched. That's another pretty critical thing. On this car, uh, the engine placement for what we want to do is it's 82 inches to the back of the mid plate to uh, the center of the rear axle. So that's a pretty important measurement when building any of these cars. You could try to move them around a little bit and see which one works better, but that's for the blower deal. They make a lot of downforce. You can move the engines back. So that's kind of good because they can run a lot of rear weight percentage which will make it work better on a on an iffy track uh but it'll also still not try to do anything crazy because they make so much downforce so that's a good thing yeah <coughs> mid plate is very very important and it's a little bit of a pain in the ass to fit <laughs> but because it needs to fit very close yeah and so you take your time laying it out and make fine lines and mm -hmm. i just go over there and clamp it up in an end mill square it all up and <laughs> yeah <laughs> but usually it works out okay yeah yeah so you just gotta double this, check double check this mid plates fit you can see on the bottom notch top notch so it fits a dual frame around the bottom this will still be cut once he makes the halo and the chassis he'll just mark that out and then cut that after but with a dual frame rail height too you can see the dual frame rails here uh you can go a little bit taller but if you go too tall then you start having an issue with getting into the headers and the head if you go too low, you start having an issue with the fuel pump up front, the way they mount it off the side of the blower. So that's about what works good on these blower cars. I think it's what, six and three eighths inside from the six, top of the bottom frame rail to the- Six and three eighths from top of this tube, bottom of this tube. Yeah, that's what we run on the blower cars. So you go a little bit higher in the nitrous cars, not much, but go a little bit higher in the nitrous cars. Anything else you want to tell them? It's been two weeks from now on every week every monday we'll we'll touch base with danny we'll do some video in between too for a couple weeks it was hard to get video on so this video is kind of a catch-up video i've been at it every day <clears throat> yeah danny's been wide open so but i think every monday we'll do a, a big recap and in between a few days uh during the week i'll also video some stuff it's important stuff but every monday we'll do video and then every tuesday we'll post an update so i think he's got about two more weeks on the chassis uh, the chassis takes a it's a lot a lot of work uh, but the sheet metal is also extremely time consuming and the tabs and brackets and seat mounts and pedals and cables and, and if people think when you get a chassis <clears throat> done, the car's basically done yeah so you've got all the sheet metal you've got windows door mounting latches yeah the body mount stuff is pretty time body consuming. mounting and uh, every little bracket you can think of that has to be on there and pedals and steering column and all that that this is really not the longest taking part of the job i would say the chassis part is a quarter one fifth to a quarter of the whole job like tacking oh, it obviously there's a lot of welding yeah, stuff too but good. yeah qu quarter of the entire build is is the chassis so the chassis part everyone thinks because the chassis is done the car is done it's, it's still a long way away at that point oh, yeah. the fit and finish and the doors and and everything are pretty time to doors front end yeah everything else so it's critical to get everything lined up right and you want it to line up right because that's what people see mm. and it also works better yeah i mean not really necessarily works better going down the track but it works better when you're opening and closing mm -hmm. doors and fits are good and front end comes off and on easy without forcing anything and mm -hmm. yeah you can half-ass it and you'll have problems <laughs> yeah. i'm a little bit getting it right yeah and you'll <clears throat> be rewarded in the end because it works yeah this car is gonna be really really nice it's gonna be a really nice piece for sure danny's doing a good job on a chassis we're not in a super rush on this car like we're justin's so we'll have a little more time hopefully at the end to put stuff together justin's car came out really good just the final finishing bodywork paint some fit and finish stuff at the very yeah, end we kind of yeah look. which i think they're going to bring it after the race and we'll probably tighten it up but yeah we had a tight schedule to get it done and something had to kind of mm -hmm. suffer a little and that wasn't going to keep him from going down the race track. Yeah, which it goes down the track pretty good. It looks really, oh yeah, it goes down the track real good. It looks real good from stands. Yeah, they've done really good. And the inside of the car looks good. They just, oh, yeah. some body stuff needs to be tightened up. And we'll get to that as soon as they get caught up on a race or get a break. I think they have a few week break one 
I in a month or so. No, I thought when he started going out west, it was like every week. It's gonna be, yeah, it's gonna be tough, so. But this car is gonna be nice, like we said. He's not in a crazy rush, so it's gonna give us time to really take the time we need. Uh, also on the main hoop, the offset we use from like the cross member to the hoop, which is, you know, cross member to the hoop is 10 inches. This car is, I think, about 10 and a quarter. 10 and a quarter. From back side of cross member to front side of hoop. Right, which the reasoning for that is obviously you can see also that the tubes going up to the back of the funny car cage lean like eight degrees. Those are just, yeah, they're eight degrees. They lean eight degrees. So that also gives you like another inch. So you end up having 11 or 12 inches. The reasoning for that is up there where your head is, the front of the hoop needs to be uh, in front of your helmet or even with the front of your helmet or however, but you don't want your head sticking out in front of the hoop. That, that does no, then there's no good for the funny car cage. You might as well not even have it. Yeah, that uh, makes it so it doesn't conform to any rule. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So your head needs to be behind that. That's the reason we use this offset. You don't want it crazy far forward and it makes it hard to get the car, but if you put it too far back and your head's hanging out in front of it, it's, it's not safe. So that's the reason for that. Uh, is there anything else you think we need to talk about? The, the the loop we put in here, you can see we notch it. Danny notched it. It's within 30 thousandths, I think Danny said. But yeah. you notch it all the way down and all the way up. Yeah, that way it has a full loop, but it gives you uh, a lot more drive shaft clearance. If if you had the whole inch on the bottom and a whole inch at the top, that's two inches less drive shaft clearance. That one had to be notched to the max yeah. because you need all the lower clearance you can have, I guess, on the radial cars because mm -hmm. they separate so bad the drive shaft goes down. Yep. So you don't want it going down hitting the chassis, naturally. Definitely not. And the top, same story. You want all the room you can get. So that's why if you saw that, you're going to see where it's like paper thin at the bottom, which essentially it doesn't matter because no. it's all it's all welded around. So it's yeah, it's just as strong. But it that notch is rather interesting. Yeah, yeah, that notch was kind of a pain, but it, they look good when they're done, and that's what you need to make the drive shaft clearance uh, for big tire and small tire. I'm trying to think if there's anything else we need to touch on. It's been a little while since we started, so. Yeah, just want to get everyone really caught up long after that because that would be pretty good <laughs> yeah i know so again like we said the center's here that's where the rear end ended up being yeah the rear end where it's at right now is at ride height that's at three and a half inch rocker ride height yep it is at ride height and compared to the body panels yeah right exactly so and the roof and everything fits back on these quarters are just tacked uh in place there so they don't move but the roof and everything goes back on right there the hoop's pretty tight up against the roof like we like it. So get, get the driver. Three and a half you're inches. You're going to be able to walk up to it if you're six foot tall. You <clears> walk up to it and the roof is going to hit you about here. That's like the sign. The sign is real yeah, low. It's going to be low. The roof on the sign is like... What's up, Eddie? What's up, bro? <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's it. What are you, what are you working on next? You're going to put the motor in after lunch, I think, roughly. Yeah, stick the motor back in. Line all that up. Let it sit. That's where it can sit for a while while we've got to figure out dash bar location and yep. the bottom part of the eight pillar bar location. And once we get all that figured out, then we can put the two pieces here, the dash bar in, then run, put body panels back on it, bend an eight pillar that fits nice and tight where mm -hmm. it needs to be. And uh, then it's finishing laddering the double frame rail. You can make the X braces for the door, but you don't put, you. You don't really put them in until you have to because mm -hmm. you can get in and out a yeah. lot better with a lot of x braces. For sure. And then you start, you know, x braces, and then you got steering column going in, mm -hmm. pedals going in, master cylinder mounts. Yeah. And control arm mounts. And this looks like a lot, but you're only, like I said, you're just about halfway. Yeah. The other thing about the blower cars with the blower, uh, there's only like one spot you can mount the rack, it fits between like the blower. There's only one spot yeah, you can put the rack, that, so close. we have to get the motor in because the rack goes right in there. there. There's no other spot for it. So once you figure that out, you get the motor in, you can figure out where the rack goes. Uh, you, you have no other choice for rack placement no other than that. For that rack. No, it's the only other place it goes. And then it'll get like a ladder kind of deal like it did in the back. I don't know if you guys saw Justin's car, you see how that looks. So it'd be pretty similar to that. The only thing in the front uh, with Justin's car was a little longer than Nova in front of the wheels, really short. We did some measuring actually this week at me and Eddie. And the front of this, instead of having like a, it cut off and then the, the uh, fuel cell slide in, the fuel cell mount, it's just gonna be, have a tube across here and it's gonna be X'd and the fuel cell will be behind it. Fuel cell is actually gonna have to be like almost two piece. Like it's gonna have to notch around the blower a lot. 
because it sticks so far forward because how short the front end is. Oh, okay. So it'll be a little different there, but other than that, it'll be, be pretty close. That's, that's all the scribbling that we use to figure out kind of what we're doing, the math stuff. Yeah, that, that, that board gets erased and scribbled on some more. Cameron puts a scribble on it, and then I come <laughs> in the morning and look at it and go, what does that mean? <laughs> uh, yeah, he's got to decipher what I wrote the night before and then, and then go from there, but we're getting it figured out. Uh, Eddie's probably gonna, at some point this week, gonna start on the drive shaft enclosure. He's gonna do the wishbone this week. And Danny's gonna stay on the chassis. So we should have this thing next Monday when we show you. We should have quite a bit more done. Yep. Anything else, Danny, for the Danny fans? Danny Man I'm gonna stick a picture in uh, in here of the the, uh, the artwork we got done for the Danny Man shirts. I find that kind of funny. Actually. <laughs> well, I'm gonna stick that picture in here, actually. I forgot oh, yeah, about that. You, yeah, you're gonna put the picture and it makes me look like an old Lee Marvin. No, it looks good. I think it looks just like you. The hair's right. Yeah, I think it looks and good. the glasses on top of the head's right. Yeah. But I look... I'm old, but that picture makes me look older than I really <laughs> We'll see. We'll see what people think. Lee, comment below. Lee Marvin. Lee yeah, Marvin. comment below and, and let us know if you think it looks like Danny or not. Because I think it looks pretty darn good. Oh, here we go. I think it looks <laughs> I think it looks pretty close, so. But then it Danny? No, it, 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 the guy artwork. I yeah, mean, he's awesome. Guy, yeah, it did awesome. He, he's pretty good. Yeah. He did do awesome. Anything else you can think of? I guess that good. That's two weeks worth of catching up. All right. All right, guys. Well, that's it for this video. Next week, we'll show you on Monday what he got done in one week, and hopefully it's a, quite a few things. Any, anybody has questions, write it in the yeah, comment you, section, and yeah. somebody will answer it. If we didn't explain something enough or there's something else you think you need to know that we didn't, we kind of oversaw or went, went through without explaining too much, which, like we said, we need to do it every week. The fact that two weeks went by without really video on anything in the shop kind of made it hard. Forgot yeah, what we were I don't doing, know so. what people want to know. So, I mean, I just say what yeah. the general stuff and somebody might have a specific question like, well, how do you do this or why do you do right. that? We need to do a thing too. When you figure out a bend, one of the next tubes you have to actually bend. We'll show them how you lay it out and, and figure out how you put it together. Well, that can make you look good or bad right there. Well, that's all right. We can edit it. No, I, yeah. I yeah. Know. <laughs> no, but I think we'll do that. Danny's really good at bending and notching and stuff. So it's the next down. tube he does, we'll, we'll, the next video we'll do that. Okay. When you lay out a tube, we'll, we'll show him how you lay it out. Because some of these tubes are really hard. Some tubes don't really matter because you, you can be wherever in the middle. But some tubes where they got to hit two or three spots, it's it's tough. It, it doesn't look like it's hard to do. That one right there can give you nightmares. Yeah, that one that one can be tough. Yeah, because the bend, if you notice, is in the same spot. And that's aesthetics. It doesn't have to be like that. I've seen some pretty generic looking funny car cages. But aesthetically, if the bend's in the same height, and if you look this way, it's in line. I mean, that thing disappears behind that tube. It's, it's perfect. So it's in line this way. The bend's in the same spot this way. So that's that, my pickiness. Yeah. It's got to look like that, though. That's what we want to do. We don't want to build cars that just knock them out and they're out the door now you, you there's certain rules you go by and there's certain things that work but you can make that look really good mm -hmm. and be legal or you can make it look not so good and still be legal so everything we do we look at it and go okay it, it needs to be here it needs to be here it needs to be here but which way is going to look the best exactly and then yep. you like we changed our minds on some x braces back there all the time because we're trying to find what flowed what looked good and would work for what we're going to be doing later and we had four people back here giving friggin ideas yeah yeah i mean and that's the other thing on these cars we keep notes on all the cars there's all justin stuffs up there and, and in a notebook over there but if we do something on a car every single car we'd like to make better you know we don't want to get stale or stagnant and no. you, you're always trying to better your product so every car we do we keep a detailed list of the tubing size wall thickness placement and if something doesn't work or we think we could change something to make it better, we change that too and we see what it does. So yeah, it's not a one man band deal. It's yeah. not like I come in here and decide, okay, I want to put it here, put it here, put it here. I got an idea and I'll run it by Cameron. Mm -hmm. And then if he's not here to do that, I'll run it by Eddie. I'll run it by Jesse. Yep. Get everybody's opinion. In the end, this man's the guy that makes the final decision. And then we just put all four of our ideas together and come up with the best one. And that's what goes in the car. Yeah. Yep. I think everyone's had good ideas. I mean, that's definitely. Uh, you know eight eyes obviously is better than two so uh, everyone's come no up with some really good ideas and and we're all here to build something nice we don't we're all in the same boat none of us 
do stuff, you know, halfway. We all want a nice quality product and we want something that works. So. No know-it-alls here. There's no know-it-alls. There's a lot of no no nothings though. Yeah, it was something that time. <laughs> no, but all right, Danny, I'm gonna let you go. Gee's gonna get back to it, and uh, next week there'll be a few more tubes in her. Keep them cars and letters coming, folks. Keep them coming. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> all right, Danny.